Well, uh, Intel on uh, consumer spending habits, uh, improving delivery times, as well as the accuracy of orders for buyers. Now, these are just some of the ways that AI is impacting the retail industry. And as the wave of artificial intelligence shows no signs of abating just yet, we're discussing the plans of Africa's largest grocer, that's ShopRite, for the technology uh, in its uh, business with its uh, chief technology officer, Chris uh, Short. Chris, thanks so much for your time. I mean, it's uh, clearly a, a situation right now where the wave is far from abating. In fact, uh, many people will say that it's just getting stronger if we look at what is happening in the AI realm, particularly generative AI. Perhaps just talk to us more closely about what ShopRite is doing right now that it hasn't already announced to market regarding its uh, innovative complex. Well, well thanks very much for, uh, for, be, for the time. Um, I, I guess uh, AI has been around for some time, and I'm sure you know, um, and it's it's taken on many forms. In in recent time, obviously, there's a lot more attention because of the the rise of generative AI and the ability and capability that comes from harnessing that technology. Um, it, it's still early days, I guess, and and there's a fair amount on the go uh, globally and also locally. Uh, where where we are spending time with these with with these technologies is trying to see how we can use it to to filter through the the sort of plethora of data that you know we we, we generate these days um try and understand how we could then use that to focus and also how we then decide to automate routine tasks and decisions utilizing the technology in various forms right so from machine learning through to computer vision um, and through to the the engagement or natural language processing that generative AI brings us. I mean, a, a lot of uh, companies are in the space that have attracted investor attention, if we just look at the uh, performance of the various stock prices in global markets. Are you, are you talking to uh, any of them, Chris? I mean, the likes of NVIDIA and all of that about what they can do for your, for, for, for your business? Not, not necessarily directly, isn't it? What, what, what we are doing, though, is we are obviously working with our, our various of our strategic partners and, and, and working with them to see how the capability that they are starting to incorporate into the services that they provide, particularly the hyperscale providers and some of the larger global software partners that we work with, are specifically incorporating uh, more and more of the various forms of AI technology along with the generative AI as a way for those um, technologies to be interacted with and and used, I guess, by end users um, in the execution from a day-to-day -day perspective. Um, so it's all very early still, uh, in our view. Um, there's there's good experimentation going on, and some of the some of the technologies obviously have matured slightly more than than some of the newer ones. I guess now, as it becomes more democratized and and maybe more consumerized. Uh, people are much more aware of, uh, you know, where AI comes into the picture and could be harnessed. Uh, what use cases are best? Um, <clears throat> I guess this is probably still to be decided and still to be experimented with. Looking at uh, what you're presently doing within your business, uh, I saw on your website that uh, you're using some of the uh, machine learning technology to help with uh, improving store layouts and shelving, for instance. I mean, it is well known that uh, you uh, do hold one of the largest uh, consumer uh, uh, loyalty cards, and there's a whole lot of data that you're able to extract there to influence uh, buying and shopping uh, patterns, not, not, notwithstanding the, uh, the delivery as well of your your 6060 service. Uh, Chris, I suppose I'm coming to a question around uh, CapEx uh, here uh, right now. And you spoke about experimenting with this technology. How much, how much are you putting aside in the budget for such experimentation? Well, it's not something that we would <coughs> typically uh, put out there, you know, specifically, um, but we, we are focused very much on, on, on aligning and the use of the technology with the core values of the organization. Um, so we are using it uh, at at the moment, as I said earlier, you know, to sort of filter through uh, the high volume of data that we do generate, uh, the the high volume of data and the scale at which we are running the operation to try to help us get through and work to the correct decision making and the correct task execution um, at the right time. 
So um, I, I think Peter has mentioned before when he's when he's spoken that we've talked, you know, we're using it actively and how do we best optimize our pricing so that we are best in class for our customers from a pricing perspective. We're using it uh, to make sure that our replenishment of particularly fresh and, and short shelf life food is is, is optimized, uh, therefore also considering the, the, the knock-on effect of trying to reduce food waste in the, in the value chain and in the markets that we're working. Um, we also make sure that we are uh, safe and secure for our customers, making sure that we use uh, the technology there, and also um, very actively using it to try to make sure that we can start to personalize the, the experience for our customers uh, more and more. Uh, and 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 in so doing, stay as relevant as we can for for our customers um, as as their demands and, and and as the trends move. What about I mean, just if you expatiate on the uh, the use case of AI in the business right now, how is it different uh, in a uh, a market perhaps that's a lot more industrialized uh, from its infrastructure offering uh, here in South Africa? Compared to the uh, other markets on the continent in which in which you operate, is there a difference in terms of use case right now? I think with all technology, there's always uh, you know adoption uh, and use cases that come to the fore based on the level of maturity of that adoption and the ability of the the market to adopt. You know, technology is is incredibly useful if it's if it's if it's easy to adopt and easy to use and bake into how people. Um, use it day to day and the, the more it becomes almost uh, a part of everyday life the easier it is for for that to happen uh, I, I don't know that that's necessarily different uh, across the different markets on the continent that we trade in um, but certain use cases and the demand of uh, what customers would expect from us will be different in the different markets because of the the level of development and then relative maturity of that so we find similar use cases make sense uh, in most of the markets they might just come into use by most customers or most of our operating model uh, at different times um, as that maturity um, triggers up we're very much customer led and so if the demand flows through from a customer requirements perspective it starts to become you know um our I guess our prerogative to to respond to that as best we can so that we, we remain as relevant to them in the markets that they are a part of. Uh, Chris, uh, the, the whole lot of debate as to whether uh, the uh, innovations and inventions that are coming out of AI and specifically generative AI will be transformative for the labor market for the good uh, or for the bad in terms of job losses. And uh, as uh, one of the uh, country's uh, biggest or if not biggest uh, employers, where do you sit uh, on that side of the fence? Look, it's it's very much uh, a drive for the organisation to make sure that we are, uh, you know, continue to drive employment, and we are, as you know, as you said, uh, one of the larger. Um, our intent in the use of the technology is certainly not to um, change that at all. Um, it's really for us to try and help bridge the divides that we see from a, a structural point of view, where we start to try and close the digital divide through the use of the technology, helping people to. To, to, to work slightly better, more effectively and, and smarter in their day-to-day -day activities. Um, and, and in so doing, change the nature and the sort of the, the scope of the work that they, they need to do. So it, it ranges from using the technology to take some of the, I guess, the more um, menial, mundane, repetitive type uh, tasks uh, away and let the machines do some of that work, but then allowing people to uh, apply their their discretion and their decision making and and let's call it their flair um which then makes the difference and creates differentiated experiences for customers over time mm -hmm. uh, just lastly a question on margins how transformative uh do you see ai being for your very healthy margins one would describe at shoprite and over what time period <laughs> that's a very difficult question to answer you know if i if I had a crystal ball, it would be wonderful. And if I could predict those kinds of things, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd try and use the technology to do so. But it's actually incredibly difficult to get a sense of that at this point. I, I think it's just really too early in the in the cycle. Um, you know, how how and what people are going to do with the technology as it becomes more 
uh, baked into what people do day to day is quite difficult to actually work at this point. Um, it also depends on how much of that technology customers take to and enjoy uh, using in their interactions and and for you know they're working with us as 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 a trusted um, retail organization for them. Uh, and so difficult one I, I'm I'm afraid at this point. Maybe okay. in a few years we'll know better because the machines have helped us decide. That's that's a good one. Well, uh, in a few years, we'll continue to have these uh, conversations over the years, uh, Margin and no doubt, uh, Chris, and no doubt your analysts will will track uh, the improvements to margins that are correlated with uh, what you're doing in the AI. But thanks so much for your time. So we'll leave it there. Chris Short, the Chief uh, Technology Officer over at the ShopRite Group.